All right. Amen. Amen. Ladies, it is Tuesday, June 13th. I can't believe it's already June, you guys. I feel like, man, time has just flown by so fast. Um, this whole year has flown by so fast. We have so much going on, so many changes. I know for us, so many things going on um, at KCC. I know that there's a lot of ministries going on all, all over the states, you know, so God is doing some big, big things in this season. And if you've been wondering if you've been delayed, I've been getting the word and my sister sent me that word this morning, right? That, um, that delay is not just to, to hold you back from what God has, right? It's to get you prepared. It's to get you set and, and ready to go. Right. So delay is not always bad. Delay is actually a good, uh, a good thing, right? It's okay to be delayed. It's okay to hold back a little bit because sometimes we want to run and we expect things to happen right away, you know, in our timing, but let God do it in his timing. And let me tell you, it's so much better than we can have ever planned, right? So, all right, ladies, today is Tuesday, June 13th. My message for you is a mindset free, a mindset free. Come on, because who knows that, um, man, the biggest battlefield that we face is in our mind, right? In our mind. This is what, what leads us to speak, what leads us to respond, what leads us to believe certain things, right? And it leads us to our path of our own destruction, right? If we're not careful. So we're going to talk about that today. Let me open up in prayer. All right. Father God, I just, I thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, we love you, Lord. We praise you, God. I honor you, Lord. I thank you, Father, for being on this call with us, God. Lord, we need your presence. We are nothing without you. We need Holy Spirit in this place. I ask you, Lord, just to take over us. Take over this call. Take over these words, Lord God. Take our worship, Lord. We give you ourselves. Lord, we release everything to you right now. Anything that we've been holding on to, God, that's been a burden, Lord, we just release it to you right now. We ask you, Father God, just to speak to us today. Speak to us through this message, Lord God. Let it be your words and not our own, Lord. They, they didn't come to hear me. They came to hear you. So Jesus, I just pray that you would have your way. Have your way. We love you, Lord. And I just come against anything, Lord God, that would hinder your word. Any doubts, any negative thinking, any words spoken, Lord God, that are negative, Lord. I just come against those doubts, those, those negative thoughts, Lord. We ask you, Father God, just to cleanse this place. Let this be holy ground, God. Let, it, let us have our hands open to receive what you have for us. Glory to you, God. You are mighty. You are wonderful. You are sovereign. You are so good, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord God. So, Lord, we ask you, Father God, to speak because your servants are listening. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Woo, I feel his presence so strongly today. Ladies, I have a couple scriptures. If, um, I'm going to Put them out here and if somebody can um just claim them then i'll call on you to read the scripture and um just let me know that you got that oh thank you jesus who he's so good i feel his presence so strongly he's wonderful james 4 7 let me tell you i can't wait till sunday to sunday to have an encounter with the king we can't wait right we have to have a even um, people who go to midweek, right? You can't even wait till midweek to have an encounter with the King. It has to be daily encounters that you, that you face, that you're with him every single day, you know, cause if you're, you're waiting until midweek or you're waiting until Sunday, you're going to be so empty and you're going to like from one day to the next, you can be a different, a completely different person. I spoke to somebody on this, on one day on, on like on a Friday and they were so on fire the very next day, they were already out fire had already gone out. Right. And that's because we don't have our daily encounters with Jesus. We have to have daily encounters. You guys, it's so important. You have to, to say those, um, got to sit in his presence, sit in his presence. All right. Let me just put one more scripture up here. I believe that's it. And then just put your names there and let me know which ones you're claiming. If that's you, if you're able to claim it, pray for your sister Angelica because she is at jury duty today. <laughs> she is enjoying that. Enjoy it. Have you guys been on jury duty? I don't want it, Lord. <laughs> I don't want it, Lord. Oh, goodness. But she is up there. Pray for her. Pray for her. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to do one more. I keep saying one more. Oh, it's so good to have you guys read this, though. I think that's 18. 18. Okay. All right. Those are my scriptures. Thank you. I see you, Aaron. Aaron has James 4, 7. Thank you, you guys, and just let me know which ones you're going to take. All right, we'll get started. 
All right. So let me read to you out of Romans 12 too. If you have your Bibles open or if you have your phones open, whatever works for you, but I have my Bible. You see all my tabs. It's so good, right? Right. All this is when it's, when your Bible is a hot mess, you are not. <laughs> Come on. When your Bible looks like a craziness, right? You are not. That means that you, you are in line. You are aligned, right? If you need a Bible, let me know. We have Bibles. We will get you one. All right. So let's read out, out of Romans 12 too. It says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but, um, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. When you know his word, when you say, Lord, I don't need to be like the world. God, I want to be like you. When you aim to be like Jesus, you're not going to be um, pulled in a million different directions. You're not going to be up on a roller coaster all the time. You're not going to be always um, like from one day to the next up and down. Like I was happy, joyful. I was walking in my calling and today I'm, I'm upset and I'm angry at the world. I don't want to talk to anybody, right? One day you can be up, up and, and, and uh, ministering to people. The next day you're cursing people, right? And that's because they, we don't have the word of God in us. So um, Jesus gave us eternal life. Thank you. Thank you ladies for taking those, those scriptures. Jesus gave us eternal life, right? Um, in Genesis 3, Satan took mankind captive. Satan took mankind captive, right? He said, he said, has God surely said? So he already went in there with, has God surely said, right? He said that to, um, to Eve in the garden, right? He, his, he needs to disarm us, right? He needs to disarm us to defeat us. That's what he needs to do. Oh, the scripture I read, sorry, was Romans 12, 2. The first scripture I read was 12 2, Romans 12 2. So Jesus came to defeat Satan. Jesus came to set our minds free, right? We have to be set free because he comes to set the captives free, right? That's who Jesus is. He is the one who restores, who redeems, who sets us free, you know? So um, who had, go ahead, eight, John 8 32. John 8 32. Oh no, hold on, give me a second. I was just there. 832. Um, hey, sister. Hello, hello, blessings. We should have this one memorized, right? And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. So much in that that what she said in that short line and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free right there's that's in movies that's in quotes that's in sermons all the time that's just in everyday talking right you don't you can't handle the truth right like there's you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free right let's let's head on over to second corinthians that's in the new testament all the way towards the back and all the eons second corinthians 10, three through five. We're going to read that together. Second Corinthians 10, three through five. All right. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. I want you to, as I read this word, I want you to listen to it. Like you've never listened to it before. Okay. I don't want you to hear the word and be like, oh, I'm used to that. I know that scripture. I want you to hear. And I want these words to jump out to you as we read them. Okay. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive, say captive, to the obedience of Christ. And we are ready to punish all disobedience whenever your obedience is complete look at that hallelujah i went further than i was supposed to but let's let's look at that right the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses so paul says we are in a war of thoughts we are in a war of thoughts any thoughts that you don't take captive will take you captive Ooh, come on any thoughts that you don't take captive will take you captive. It's waiting. Let me get them. Let me get her, right? This one was 2 Corinthians 10, 
three through five. And you guys, if anybody can write that in there as we go, you guys can type those in there to help our sisters. Um, so if we don't take them captive, it's going to take us captive. Who's the prisoner? Are you the prisoner or are those thoughts the prisoner? Fear, lust, and anger and bondage. Those are all thoughts, right? These are each one is a house of thoughts. Is there a house of fear in your mind? Is there a house of lust in your mind? Is there a house of anger in your mind, right? You're, it's, you're, you're in bondage to these thoughts. You make little homes for them in your mind. They have, when really you got to evict them out of there and they got to be put into prison, right? Every thought must be obedient to Christ. Every thought. You got to put a spear to it. You got to have it listen to what Jesus says. You got to say, wait a second. You're telling me that I'm going to be sick. You're telling me that I'm going to be poor. You're telling me that I'm going to lose my job. You're telling me that my kids are not going to uh, be saved, right? You got to take those thoughts captive and, and put them in prison. You cannot give life to them. You say, that's not true. You're telling me that they don't want to be around me. You're telling me that they don't love me, that these people don't love me. Lies of the enemy. Who said that to you? Who's telling you that? You got to discern it, sisters. You got to discern it. You say, what is the truth and what is the lie? Right? What do, do you see yourself as? What do you speak over yourself? How do you think about yourself? What are the words that come out of your mouth about you? Does it align with heaven? Does it align with heaven? Or is it words that, that you know God didn't say to you? but yet you're saying it anyway, right? Let me just tell you something. When you do that, you're partnering with a lie. You've no longer, you, you, you've taken your hands off the truth, right? And you've partnered with the enemy. I don't know about you, but I don't want to partner with the enemy. Anybody else? No, no partnering with the enemy. Yeah, we don't want to do that. So we have to know how to not do that, right? How do you think about yourself? You got to meditate on, on who God created you to be. And when you meditate, you're not meditating and clearing your mind, like in the, the new world um, thing today, right? They want to clear your mind. No, you are meditating on the word of God. You're saying everything else needs to be quiet and I need to focus on God's word. Sit in his presence. Saturate in the Holy Spirit's presence and say, God, what do you say about me? What did you say? I hear what they're saying loud and clear, but what are you saying about me, God? What are you saying about this situation, right? Um, toxic thoughts, rogue thoughts, are strongholds. Your flesh cannot fight a spiritual battle. Your flesh cannot fight a spiritual battle, right? You, gotta, you can't fight in the flesh. You got to make Jesus the Lord of your thoughts. Who has J uh, James 4, 7? That's me. <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, let's see. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come on. If you guys have seen um, War Room, then you have seen this, this scripture in that movie, right, where she says, resist the devil, and he will flee resist the devil and he will flee. And she starts going around her house and she goes, devil, you're done. Your time is up. You cannot have my family. You cannot have my marriage. Right. And she starts going to war and she kicks this devil out of her house. Right. It's not the devil. Listen, because the devil is not omnipresent, but it's his demons. Okay. There's only, he has an army. So you have to not allow the enemy or the army to come in and, and say those words over you. You got to take authority, right? And so he says, do, you know, submit to God, submit to the higher king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, right? And defeat the devil, resist the devil, resist the enemy, and he will flee. So he, they're saying resist because a lot of us are not resisting because the enemy can flee and will be told to flee if we resist. We have to resist. We have to say, get out. I'm not partnering with you. I'm not believing that lie. I'm not going to be on a roller coaster ride every single day of my life thinking God's here, God's not here, God's here, God's not here. God said he's here. So do I believe him or do I not? Right? Yes, Aaron, kick the devil out of your house. You got to get him out. Right? So Jesus will decide what thoughts that you should keep. Lord, help me. <laughs> help me, Lord. Am I thinking right? And do I have a sound mind? 
right? Because he does not give you a spirit of fear, but he gives you a sound mind, right? Of love and of power, sound mind, right? So let God choose those words that need to stay in there. You know what those words are? They're love, they're uplifting, they're edification, they're life-giving, right? Those, that's what God does. The enemy does the opposite. So the word of God is a spiritual weapon. The word of God is a spiritual weapon. If you go over with me into Ephesians 6.10, I say this all the time, 6.10, um, through 18, um, through 17. We're going to read this right now. This one's just Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and, and in the strength of his might. Okay. We're going to continue on to number 11, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Listen, the devil has schemes. Okay. The devil has plans for your life but God has better plans for your life, right? The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And what does God come to do? To give you life and to give it to you abundantly. So who are we partnering with? Who are we giving our mind to? We got to shut the devil up. We got to say, get out of here. I want, I want my life. I want the way that God, the life that God has for me. So you need to get out because I don't want to follow you. Because if I follow you and I listen to your words and I partner with them and I believe them, you'll start seeing, this is what, what the enemy does. He makes you believe the word and he slowly starts isolating you. He starts pulling you away from everything that God has brought to you, right? We've seen it for several years. We've seen this happen constantly over and over again, right? This is how the enemy works. He comes in, starts telling you lies, He's like, wait a second, you have an army of people that love you? No, can't have that. So we'll say, you know what? They're talking about you. Oh, they don't like you. Oh, they're mean. Oh, and he'll start creating all these lies, right? We see it all the time. And then you start believing it. You say, you know what? You're right. They are, they are, they, they are this way. This, it happened. I did notice that that one time. There was a red flag that one time. There was this, you start partnering with it, right? And then you start pulling back. You start walking away. That's the plan of the enemy. He wants you by yourself. So you have to know that he studies you. He knows what your triggers are. He knows what's going to bring you back to where you were at the beginning. He knows what's going to take you back to the pit, right? He knows because he studies you. He doesn't stop working, right? So we shouldn't stop working, right? We should know the, the schemes of the enemy. We should know his plans, which is to steal, kill, and destroy. And he will do it through any tactic that he can find, right? For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the for world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. You need that armor of God. Let's talk about the armor. Let's talk about the armor, ladies. Right? You got, you got to be strong in the Lord. He says, be strong in the Lord. Finally, brethren and sisters, be strong in the Lord. Right? Put on the belt of truth belt i want as as we say these words put those on your bodies as we're talking right put that belt of truth god put that belt of truth on me right he says gird your loins of truth right you got to eliminate error so that you can reproduce truth come on eliminate the lies reproduce truth right you got to make a decision to use the word of god does what you're saying does what you believe does what you're hearing match the word of god Simple things, right? Simple things to, to, to look at. Wait a second. This person is bringing all this stuff to me and they're, they're bringing all, they're dumping all this stuff on me. And now I want to agree with them because it feels good. Doesn't it feel good when you can be like, oh, can you believe, right? In our flesh, it feels good, but spiritually it's not, right? Because really quickly it turns into gossip and really, and you know, gossip is a sin, right? The enemy knows your triggers. I have to check myself daily. Lord, am I saying this because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to minister or get, get guidance, or am I saying this because I'm, I'm upset and I'm emotional about it, right? You have to read, read what's going on, read the room, be aware, be aware of what's happening around you, right? Does it match up to the word of God, right? How about the breastplate of righteousness, right? Put that breastplate of righteousness on, right? The blood of Jesus is the strongest cleansing agent in the universe. The blood of Jesus, 
right? He cl cleanses, it redeems, it, it purifies, right? All these things, the blood of Jesus saves, it, it does, it covers, right? You're protected, right? You have to believe that you have the blood. If you can believe that you have the blood, I got the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, I am healed. The power of the blood of Jesus, right? You got to speak those words. You got to speak those. What about the helmet of salvation? Put that helmet on, ladies, right? What are our thoughts? You have to think saved thoughts. You got to think saved thoughts, right? Salvation thoughts. What are those salvation? I am saved. I am saved. I have been saved by the King of Kings who came to give me life right? He saved me. Come on. What about the shoes of the gospel of peace? Put those shoes on your feet, right? You, you are, you are called to go, go right. And win souls and make disciples, right? Does your life glorify God? Does your life glorify the God who takes you to heaven, who brings you home to heaven? Does your life glorify him? Right? What about the shield of faith? Where's your shield? right? Your shield of faith, the faith that can move mountains, right? If faith can move mountains, let the mountains move. Come on. You are destined. Come on. You're, you, you are called to move mountains in your faith. You, right? We were supposed to be driving through a storm last night, through like a, a tornado. We had a tornado watch last night. We were coming from Fort Worth and it was going to take us four and a half hours to get here. And they're like, oh, don't go because it's gonna, there's going to be a storm because the, um, the, uh, the tornado is coming. And on our, our phones, it was tornado watch. Even at the event that we were at, they, all the alarms are going off, right? And we saw it on the phone, how the storm was brewing and we were going to just drive straight through that. And we got in the car and we said, no, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we believe and we have faith that we're going to get home safely. We're not going to drive through that because we got to get home, right? And look at that. We didn't see one raindrop right? We made it through all the way. We didn't face any storms. Now, I think some area, different areas did, but we didn't drive through it, right? Where is your faith? Where's your faith of the gospel, right? The gospel is the good news. Where's your faith? Do you speak faith words? Are you that place? Are you that person that, that says, sister, have faith, have faith, have faith that God is doing a good thing. I know it looks crazy right now. I know you're going through some things. I know it's always stressful. I know that things are always happening. Trust me, everybody's dealing with something. But have faith. Have faith, right? Just because some people are not showing it doesn't mean it's not happening. They're just having faith. They're shifting. They're saying, nope, I want to react like this, and I'm going to react like this because I believe you, God right? You don't know, put your hands out. God, I need you. This is a receiving position. Give me more, God. Fill me up, God, right? Yesterday, when we were, at, we were in worship at this, um, this uh, event, pastor's event, and my husband was, was in worship. He was crying out to God, and, and he just kept hearing, fill me up, God, fill me up, God, fill me up, God, fill me up. And in that moment, the song switched, and it went to Fill me up, God, like that song. And, and what a, just a moment, a moment of just crying out to your father in those moments of despair, in those moments of distress, in those moments of like, I, I'm losing it, God, just reaching out and look at how God just sends you that sweet reminder, right? That he's with you. He's with you. Have that shield of faith ready, right? What about the sword of the spirit? Sword of the spirit, this should be on you everywhere you go everywhere you go, right? This should be on you. It is written, right? It is written is what God, what Jesus says, right? It is written. This is how you defeat the devil, right? I think I wrote on this one. Nope. My other one that says, um, this is how I fight my battles, right? This is how you fight your battles. Come on with the word of God. This is your sword, right? It doesn't matter what anybody has or what they say. It's the sword of God, right? In, in that, um, that same movie war room where the, they're getting, um, robbed at gunpoint, right? The, the, the grandma was like, get behind me or I rebuke you. You put that, that gun down. Right. And, and the guy ran you guys, this happens all the time. It's not just a movie. This happens all the time, right? How much authority do you carry? How much do you carry God's authority? When he said, I gave you the authority, did you receive it? Did you claim it? Did you take it and say, that's my authority in the name of Jesus, right? 
This is a nuclear for our spiritual battle. The words that say it is written, right? In Hebrews 4.12. Did I give anybody Hebrews 4.12? I think I did. Somebody have that one? If not, I will go to it. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Hebrews 4.12. Oh, you got it? Go ahead. Yes, go ahead, sis. Well, well, I'm not there, but I know which one that is. Yes, go ahead. I'll wait. Thank you, Jesus. That one is powerful. That's about the sword of the spirit. Yes, amen. Oh. The Lord had me draw that, actually. You know, that was, mm. And I drew a heart and then the sword. Amen. And the heart. That's what it does. It penetrates. Ah, yeah. Okay, let's talk. Thank you, Jesus. Word 12. Um, for the word of the living. I'm sorry. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing into the division of the soul and of the spirit, of joints, of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Amen. Come on. Come on. Read that one more time, sister. I want you to, to declare that really loud. Give me that growl. Hallelujah. You hear, you yes. hear what she's saying right now with these words, ladies. Go ahead. Yes. Penetrating, penetrating. Lord, open yes. up our hearts. For yes. the word of the Lord is living, active, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing into the division of the sword and of spirit, of joints, and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, that just I even like the me. next one. Come on. Even the ne- even the next one is good. It says Go and no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Meaning we are transparent in his eyes. We are like an x-ray when he sees us means it doesn't matter how clothed and how we sit in the closet and we think we're in darkness he's pierced right through that there's a light he can see that that and we have to give an account of our actions i mean come on somebody that's why we need the word to penetrate into our hearts amen hallelujah thank you jesus Ooh, goodness. Me. thank you jesus it should penetrate that's why i say when we read these words when you hear the word of god there should be a a desire it shouldn't be like oh here we go when we're reading scripture, this should, this is life. This is life. Like the Bible is a healer, right? It's a healer and it, and it's, and it's a killer. Come on. Cause it kills the bad things and it heals the good things. Come on. Who knows that? Like, this is what God does. He, it, this word of God, it slays the enemy, but it heals our wounds. Come on. It slays the enemy, but it heals our wounds. Thank you, Jesus. Right. We got to understand the biblical meditation as a spiritual warfare. Um, biblical med- meditation is spiritual warfare. Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Psalms 1, 1, 2, 3. That's me. Um, it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in a cordial of, an un- of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of a sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scoundrel but his delight is in the law of the lord and his law doeth he meditates day and night and and he shall be likely like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his seasons, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to read that in the NLT too. 
It says, oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with the sinners or join in with the mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, right? What she said, meditating on it day and night. So you're delighting in the law of the Lord, right? You're delighting in those words and what he's saying, right? You're delighting in, in these, in these, this is giving you life. It's giving you joy. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. This is what God is saying in his word, right? You can read as many books as you want. You can get in there and read all kinds of books. You can get all the book knowledge that you want to get out there, right? But the Bible reads us. Come on. You can read all the books, but the Bible reads us. We have to meditate on scripture and it will instantly set you free. Man, when you hear that word of God and you, and you say, you know what, God, I need you to speak to me because I don't want to just read it. I don't want to just be a Bible scholar. I want Holy Spirit to, to, to give it life, to jump out of the page and into me. I want to feast on those, right? Meditate on the word with of God and everything will prosper. Everything, right? You got to meditate. You got to ruminate, right? Which is to, to, to murmur, to murmur to yourself through, through meditation. It's not to clear your mind, right? It's about putting God's word in there, reading the scripture, putting it into your heart, right? And bringing it up in your day. When you, when you read this scripture, when you read it, when you underline it, when you highlight it, when you say, Lord, speak to me, God, you said delight those that delight in the law of the Lord, right? When I read those words, God, that when I need it, it's going to come up again. Every time, every time, right? This is what God will do, right? So the word of God reprograms your brain, right? And it gets you, so it, you have to, we haven't, an, so if you think about your brain as a, um, let's say a hardware, okay, your brain is a brilliant hardware, your, um, but it has infected software, <laughs> right? So like you, there's so much infection because of all the world that the world, what the world is saying, saying, so the word of God has to reprogram your brain, right? So how do you reprogram the, the brain, right? You have to meditate. You got to take out, remove evict yes to the virus get the virus out put the healing agents in right with the healing agent is the blood of jesus is the word of god right and you have to put that in there you have to replace it right and and when something comes up you're gonna hear you're gonna hear god who who did i give uh, romans 8 to 8 to i got that hang on a second. okay yes go ahead. okay was it 8 to Yes. Um, because through Jesus Christ, the law of the spirit of life set free from the law of sin and death. Yes. Read uh, read one and two, sis. Sorry. Yeah, read one and okay. two. Okay, sure. Um, so start over. <laughs> so therefore, <laughs> there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Come on. So the virus is the word is the world's words over your life, right? The virus is the one that's saying you you're going to hell. The virus is the one that you're condemned. Shame on you. Shame on you, right? But God's word, when you put that word and you believe what Jesus says, right? He's saying there is no shame on you, right? There's shame off of you, right? And there's no condemnation in Christ, right? There's conviction. Thank you, Jesus. But there's no condemnation in Christ. So that you had to remove those words, right? Because God has not given us a, a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of sound minds, right? So we should have the sound mind. So that means that there's a virus of fear roaming around in my head. That means I got to believe what God says. I got to say, nope, nope. God said in his word that he does not give me the spirit of fear. In fact, he says it 365 times uh, in the Bible, right? Do not fear virus. Oh, you should fear. Do not fear, God says, virus. Do not fear. That's why you gotta keep daily renewing your mind. Daily. Like, nope, Lord, I need you to renew my mind. Renew my mind. Be in that place of renewal. Be in that place of just saying, God, just renew me. Renew me. Renew my mind. Renew my mind. Because there's a lot that you've been carrying. There's a lot of generational 
curses that were open for you. There's doors that have been open for you in the past. There's baggage that you carried from your old marriage to the new marriage. There's baggage that you carry from your childhood to your adulthood. There's just baggage that you carry when you go to the store, baggage when you go and go to your workplace, right? All the things that, that you're carrying, you have to um, remove all that. You got to exchange all of that for the truth, right? You need a, you need a, a renewal, right? You need the, 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 the software to be fixed, right? So our mind can wander. Our mind can wander. Do you guys ever sit there and like, you're, you're listening to somebody talk and they're talking and you're listening. Then all of a sudden your mind just wanders in the middle of their conversation. And you're, <laughs> you're like, wait, what was that over there? And then you, then you bring yourself back and like, oh my gosh, I just missed the whole thing. What were they saying? <laughs> that happens. Listen, don't feel guilty, but this is how quick our minds can wander, right? If in a moment our mind can wander, how much more so do we need to renew our minds daily? How much more so do we got to get them put the put the the cell the helmet of salvation on, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, right? How the breastplate of righteousness? How much more so do we need to do that and not forget, right? You don't have to go on the roller coaster of life. You don't have to go one day on fire for God, the next day flat on your face in defeat. One day, I know everything God is telling me. The next day, I'm confused. One day, I know that these people love me. The next day, I don't think they love me. You don't have to do that. You can just say, God, renew my mind. That's not true. I rebuke it. It's not true. It's a lie of the enemy. Lie of the enemy. Well, so-and-so said, but did they say it to you? Ooh, come on. Don't, don't do the, the hearsay because that's where the enemy gets you, right? You start believing those lies. And God's like, did I say that? Has God surely said, come on. Has God surely said. So when you're laying in bed at night, you got to med meditate time, four times a day. Meditate four times a day, right? As much as you can. Laying in your bed at night, moving around in your day, in the shower, right? When you're traveling, just re God, renew my mind. Renew my mind, God. Let me just put my mind on you. Put the helmet of salvation on, God. Put that, that shield uh, right around me, Lord God, right? You come against me, I'm going to come against you with scripture because that's what Jesus did, right? We're here to be like Jesus, right? And that's what he did. He didn't sit there and negotiate. He said, it is written, right? This is what, according to the, 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 my answer is according to what God says, not according to my opinion, not according to your opinion. It's about what God says, right? So biblical meditation, bring those words into your heart, bring them up when you need it right? You got to take captive, right? You got to take captive those words. We are the uh, gatekeepers of our minds. We are the gatekeepers of our minds, right? Your mindset has to be that it's not the circumstance, but it's about what you, it's, it's what you think about the circumstance, right? You're the gatekeepers of, our, of your mind. Um, we need to armor up. Do you want to be set free today? You got to armor up. You got to armor up. You got to say no more. I'm not taking this anymore. Did I give somebody John 19, 18? If I did not, it's okay. We're going to go into John 19, 18. All right. John 19, 18. There they crucified him and with him two other men, one on either side and Jesus in between. Where did I go? Make sure I'm reading the right one. 1918, yes. Let me go through here. Let me read that from the top. They took Jesus, therefore, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two other men, one on either side and Jesus in between. So he was crucified on a hill that looks like a skull. Okay. And look it. He didn't sit in that, right? Let me go back to the beginning. That was my opening word. He was crucified on a place that looked like a human skull. He was crucified there in that place to give us eternal life. Come on. This is what the king does. It might look bad. It might look crazy, but what do you have to put on your mind to say, no, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. He had to put his mind in a place of, in his mindset, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Come on. Can, if he can do it and we're supposed to be like him, how much more so? Do we need to, right? Lord, use me, God, use me, right? Thank you, Jesus. If we don't have his word, we can be taken out. 
if we don't have his word, if Jesus didn't have God's word, right, in the scriptures, then he wouldn't, he would have negotiated with the enemy, right? He, he was like, well, it is written. Well, if there was no word, right? And, but he, he did, he had the word and he meditated on those words. He, he sat in those words. He, he read those words. He spent time with his father. He was close to his father. There has to be an intimacy that you have with your father. There has to be intimacy, ladies. There can't be a dry, listen, your relationship with your earthly father is not the same as your relationship with your, your heavenly father, right? There's no relation there. There's not the same, right? So we can't compare and be like, well, I don't have it. And I'm not that close here, but your father in heaven, you should be so intimate. You should have such an intimacy that when you feel his presence, that you just start bawling. When you call on him and he, he, he pours his presence over you, that you should just start feeling so much joy and love and peace that you should feel that every single thing that has come at you and come against you, that it has no power to, to, to reside. It has no power to stay, that it has to flee in the name of Jesus because you have the authority and you have the Holy Spirit in you. John 8, 32, like we said, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That truth of God will set you free, ladies. You don't have to live like this anymore. You don't have to live in burdens anymore. You don't have to live in, in uh, distress anymore and depression anymore because God has come to set you free. Don't be taken captive. You take captive. Come on, don't be taken captive anymore. You take captive. You take authority over those thoughts, right? What you say becomes the truth. What are you prophesying over? What are you saying and what are you believing in, right? Our flesh is weak. Our flesh may fail, but God, you are mighty every single time. Make Jesus the Lord of your thoughts. You have to submit to God. And the devil will flee. The devil will flee. Come on, in Jesus' name, let's pray. Father God. Jesus, we need you. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your presence. We thank you, God, that you are mighty, that you are wonderful, that you are sovereign, God. Thank you, Lord, that, that we can take captive every thought, that we don't have to believe the words of the enemy. We don't have to believe the lies of the enemy, Lord God, that we can rebuke it immediately. As soon as those thoughts come in, Lord, that we can rebuke those words right now, immediately that we would take them captive, Lord God, that they wouldn't take us captive, that we wouldn't be the prisoner, Lord God, that we wouldn't build tiny homes for these, these, uh, these thoughts of lust, that these thoughts of anger, of these thoughts of, 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 of um, depression. Lord God, we wouldn't build tiny homes in our head for those. We would evict those out immediately. And we would say, no, those are lies of the enemy, that we wouldn't allow the enemy to whisper into our ear so that we can be pulled away so that we can be isolated away. He doesn't want you around people. He doesn't want you around godly people. He wants you around people. He doesn't want you around godly people. And he doesn't care if you go to church. He cares if you start applying that Bible to your life. Come on, Jesus, use us, Lord God. Lord God, reveal to us right now the words that we have been speaking over our lives, the negative words, the, the hateful words, Lord God, the lying words. Lord, I pray right now, God, that we would take authority in the name of Jesus to capture every single negative thought and every single negative cursed word, that we would take those into captivity, Lord God, and we would make them submit to you, Jesus, that every single negative word and thought would submit to you, that we would not submit to it that we would take it into prison, Lord God, that we would handcuff the, these words and that we would give them to you. And we will put them in the, th the, the courts of heaven and let you deal with it, God. Jesus, let us not linger in a moment. Let us not linger in a lie. Let us not believe for a second those negative words spoken over us, God. Those words that come to steal, kill, and destroy. Those words that come to divide and conquer. We break it in Jesus' name. I pray right now a boldness right now over all of our sisters. A boldness from heaven right now in Jesus' name. We ask you, Lord, to take over. Take over, Lord. I pray that we would submit ourselves to you, Lord God. That we would be so willing, Lord, to sit in your presence. To release burdens, God. To not read the Bible as if we just something that we read every day. To not just be so busy being a Christian, Lord God, but that we would be that we'd be so busy just falling in love with you, following you, doing what you said. Jesus, 
We need you. We need you. We need you, Holy Spirit. Infiltrate. We ask you, Father God, let these words that you speak penetrate our hearts. Let it not just be something that we do in routine. Let it be something that changes us. We don't come for information, God. We come for transformation. Jesus, we need you. Holy Spirit, come. We say fear, go. We say depression, go. We say doubt, go in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, come. Come into our hearts. Come into our minds. Refresh and reset and recharge us. Let us not be a swaying uh, tree, Lord God. Let us not break off our branches, Father God. Let us be firmly planted. Let us be rooted in your word. Jesus, use us. We love you. We praise you and we honor you. And it's in your mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. If there's anybody here, I want to always invite you for this. If you have not given your life to Jesus and you want to, this is your opportunity. Raise your hand. If you already gave your life to Jesus and you just want to rededicate, this is your opportunity. Rededicate. That just means that, you know what, God, I fell off. I started wandering like we can do as, as sheep, right? We can start wandering, wandering, and we can look up and be completely away from the shepherd. And God's not mad about that. He just wants you to come home. So if that's you and you just want to rededicate, comment, leave, a, leave a, an emoji or something here, but we're going to pray. We're just going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. And we're celebrating with you, sisters, if this is you praying. And um, for all of those who are listening, just pray along with me, because with me, we got people on, on our YouTube channel too that watch as well. So if this is you, we want to pray for you as well. Thank you, Jesus. Father, God, you said that if we confess with our mouth, that you are Lord, God, that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for us, God, to, for our sins, that if we would confess, God, that we're sinners and that we need a savior. You said that if we believe that Jesus was sent for us to die on the cross, God, and that he rose from the, the dead three days later, and he came to give us life and gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit, that if we said, please forgive us of our sins, Jesus, and you said, if we repent, that if we repent, it means to turn. You said, if we do that, God, that we would have eternal life in heaven. That you would give us life eternally with you. Jesus, for all of those who believe those words, not just say it, but those who believe these words. We rejoice right now with heaven. We rejoice in the name of Jesus. Because they're living again. Hallelujah. And for those, Lord God, who just want to rededicate their lives to you right now, God, we lift them up to you, Jesus. We thank you, God, that that I'm um, just as a prodigal son left and, and went away, God, that, that you do the same thing, God, that you receive your children back with open arms, that you don't count all their mistakes against them, God, but that in this moment, you just wash them clean, God, and you bring them back home, that you bring out the best feast that you celebrate with heaven, in heaven, Lord God. And we celebrate with heaven, God, as our sisters come back home to you. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. And it's in your mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to turn off the recording so we can discuss. But um, one moment.